Hello and welcome to Bite Sized Book History. I'm your host, Allie Alvis, although some of you may know me better as Book Historia on Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. I'm a book historian and rare book cataloger at antiquarian book dealer Type Punch Matrix. So you thought we were done talking about metal in books, huh? Well, not so fast. Some eagle eyed viewers may notice that I left out an important piece of metal book history chains. I wanted to dedicate a whole video to the concept of chained libraries, because just like Rihanna, chains excite me, but for purely bibliographic reasons. I'll also be talking about some more unconventional ways of protecting your books. If you haven't watched my last video on metal in books, here's some quick background. In the early Middle Ages, centuries before the advent of printing in the West, books were all written out by hand sometimes by monks in monasteries. These manuscripts could take years to produce, and between the cost of materials and the time it took to copy, and sometimes illuminate a whole book, they could be very expensive. In the early Middle Ages, the entirety of a monastic library could be stored in a locked chest or two, which was ideal for security, or on an open shelf or two. And in these storage options, the books were stored flat, rather than sitting upright as they do today. As libraries grew, it became impossible to confine them to chests. But how do you secure an open shelf of books? It's important to note here that medieval librarians were not trying to secure their books from the public, but from the sticky fingers of quote unquote internal users. Monks and students at universities were generally the only ones who had access to these stacks in the period. The most popular library security method came in the form of chains. Yes, books were literally chained to the shelves to keep people from walking off with them. I have a neat little miniature example here from the 19th century. It's a little inaccurate in some ways, but it gives you the general idea. A reader would come up to this lectern and pull the book out of its little cubby hole, can't go too far with it, and set it up here to read. So obviously the person interested in stealing this would not be able to just steal the book. They'd have to steal this whole thing, making the act a bit less surreptitious than perhaps they hoped. Chaining books was the default storage method throughout Europe for centuries, and the effect of this practice can still be seen today. Burnett Hillman Streeter, who wrote the book on chained libraries, describes how the fact that books were chained conditioned the structure and development of the historic library to the end of the 17th century. The length of the chains dictated the general orientation of the library space. Since books couldn't be taken off the shelf and carried to desks, slopes and lecterns were built directly into the shelves. And since the books couldn't be carried to a window to get more light for reading, very important in the days before electricity, the shelving units needed to be situated near windows. But how does this work functionally? As you can see on my little model, clipping the chain onto the flimsy end of this book means it could pretty easily be torn off. That's where edge out shelving comes in. Rings would be anchored into the wooden boards of a book's binding, usually at the top or fore edge, to which a chain could be attached. The chain would then be attached to a metal rod that ran across the top or bottom of the shelf, kind of like a shower curtain rod. If a book needed to be added or removed from the shelf, the rod could be unlocked and taken off. But as this was the crux of the whole security system, these rods were often locked with a mechanism that required the use of two separate keys held by two different people. But as printing technology developed and scaled up and libraries grew in response, it became logistically impossible to continue chaining books to shelves. By the early 18th century, chaining books was completely phased out, but older books still retained their chains and made for unfriendly shelf mates. So oftentimes the chains and their fittings were yanked out of the boards. While you can still find books with chains in special collections and at antiquarian book dealers, it's more common to come across something like this example from the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives. This book has the telltale holes that indicate a chain fitting once adorned its head edge. You can see that the holes were drilled right into the board. Some intact chained libraries still survive across Europe though. The most famous is probably Hereford Cathedral in England, and Cheatham's Library in Manchester has a lovely chained section too. 
Chained libraries remain an evocative indication of how precious books were in centuries past, and they pop up with some regularity in fiction. Chained libraries have made cameos in TV shows like Game of Thrones, and in movies such as Doctor Strange. There's even a neat little nod to chained libraries in the back of this Magic the Gathering card from the Dominaria set. Artist Aaron Miller depicts a chain preventing the book from floating away in the background. Terry Pratchett's Unseen University Library of Discworld also features some chained books, but in this case it's to protect the people from the bibliographic beasties. But even chains are not guaranteed to put off a determined book thief. Keys could be stolen, and chains could be cut or ripped out. Some librarians and book owners enlisted the help of the supernatural for some additional book security. It's not unheard of to find a curse written in a medieval or early modern book, warning would-be thieves that they would be punished by a higher authority. Many examples exist of book curses, threatening anyone foolish enough to steal or damage the book in question. While most of these curses threaten the stealer with excommunication, others could be a bit more graphic. This curse, written in a Bible around 1172, reads, If anyone take away this book, let him die the death. Let him be fried in a pan. Let the falling sickness and fever seize him. Let him be broken on the wheel and hanged. Amen. Another of my favorites is this one from the 13th century. This book belongs to the Monastery of Rochester. Anyone who takes it from there, hides or keeps it, or damages or erases this inscription, or makes or causes it to be deleted, may his name be deleted from the Book of Life. This tradition continues today, at least sort of. I, for one, know that my dad would write in big capital letters, THINK TWICE, in his expensive college textbooks. That does it for this episode of Bite Sized Book History. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click those manicules on the like and subscribe buttons. And drop a comment if you have any interesting bibliographic security stories, or if you have a topic you would like to hear me speak on. I'll see you next time, and remember, don't bite your books. Mm -hmm.